was destroyed. No, Frodo. The spirit endured. The new age is not new. In fact, it is very old. And we have had a war, a blood feud, with this old religion. For thousands of years, back to the very founding of Hyperborea. They worship the triple goddess that all these researchers seem to have at the tip of their tongue, but fail to point to. It's the goddess of the new age, of Wicca, of masonry, and it is the one who hates us. It is the enemy. John Michael Greer writes, Harrison proclaimed that Europe itself had been the location of an idyllic, goddess-worshipping, matriarchal civilization just before the beginning of recorded history, and spoke bitterly of the disastrous consequences of the Indo-European invasion that destroyed it. In the hands of later writers such as Robert Graves, Yakita Hawks, and Maria Gambutas, this lost civilization of the goddess came to play the same sort of role in many Wiccan and New Age communities as Atlantis and Lemuria did in Theosophy. The idea that a matriistic early Europe, which had venerated such a deity, was developed in books by amateur scholars such as Robert Griffalt's The Mothers, 1927, and Robert Graves' The White Goddess in 1948. The difference between us and them is that they remember and they know who we are. We don't know who they are until now. Scholar Maria Gambutas theories relating to goddess-centered culture among pre-Indo-European Old Europe circa 6,500 to 3,500 BCE have been widely adopted by New Age and eco-feminist groups. She had been referred to as the grandmother of the goddess movement in the 1990s. Now, who kept these ways? Who stayed true to the pre Indo-European, Old Europe, goddess worship. Where does this lineage continue? It's Canaan, it's Babylon, and the goddess they worship is Anana Ishtar, the horned god that they worship is Baal. Gambutas postulated that in old Europe, the Aegean, and the Near East, a single great triple goddess was worshipped, predating what she deemed as a patriarchal religion imported by the Kurgan Indo European Hyperboreans, nomadic speakers of Indo European languages. Gambut has interpreted iconography from Neolithic and earlier periods of European history, evidence of worship of a triple goddess represented by 1. Birds of prey or poisonous snakes interpreted as death. 2. 
mother figures interpreted as symbols of birth and fertility. Three, moths, butterflies, or bees. Or alternatively, a frog, hedgehog, or bull's head. Symbolizing and representing regeneration. Do you see what I'm saying? Does this sound familiar to my listeners who can see the struggle? And maybe you have not been able to see the struggle, but now I hope I can plainly and clearly explain to you what it is. They hate us. They've hated us for the last 7,000 years. And when they see you, they seethe and shriek because you represent everything that they and their own blood memory hate. And so they will do everything they can to revive the Triple Goddess Movement, and we see the revival happening now, and we're going to look at some clear-cut cases of this in real time, and we can look at some case studies of what happens to Hyperborean women who unfortunately fall into this. Notice these people will never, ever mention or invoke the goddess Frigga. They will never. They talk about goddesses, they talk about the feminine, but they never invoke the goddess of hearth and home and motherhood. I wonder why they reject her and embrace Inanna. the goddess of lust, death, and power. That's what the tripartite represents of that being, as opposed to the tripartite of Frigga, which represents motherhood, hearth, and clan. And so Wicca, a avenue that they use to pose as something resembling their own Hyperborean lines, their own blood memory, but is a stealth psyop operation of Ishtar and the Horn God. And they, of course, operating under their own occult laws, they tell you straight up, without any misdirection, that they worship two deities, the Horn God and the Triple Goddess. They are telling you who they are because that's how they operate. And they know if they don't, if they lie, it will cause negative consequences in their own Orlog. And so just remember always to look at what people are posting, what people are associating with, even within our own groups, our own folk. If they're posting images of horned entities, why would they be doing that instead of posting images of Olden and Frigg? Uh, Beautiful representation of two entities that we venerate, who look like us, who are humanoid, who exemplify our traits. Of all the things you could use to represent yourself, why wouldn't you use these images, these deities? Why would you use goat heads? and 
horned entities and hybrid entities. Clearly, the people who use such imagery, their allegiance is to the horn god. Because they have to tell you. They don't have to tell you with words, because symbolism is language. So they can tell you with the symbolism. That's why you should always pay attention to the symbolism people use. Now, I know I looked at Sky Life before and laughed at her being possessed, but in reality, it is a bit sad what's happened here. If you look at her timeline of her channel, it's pretty much the clear cut example of the path that happens to these women when they embrace the goddess and the horn god. So the beginning of her channel, it was like New Age Light. Maybe some yoga stuff, you know, eutropics, Coachella, mushroom, sound healing, yoga, right? Lots of yoga stuff. That's how they hook you in. You start going on these yogic retreats and you start opening yourself up to these people and all the entities they carry around with them. And you start to weaken the veil between you and the other side and you become more vulnerable to their influences and you have all these initiates trying to lure you in and coach you in, right? And then you start getting deeper and deeper and you start experimenting with veganism and vegetarianism. So physically as well, you start to lose some of these essential nutrients that you need to, to keep your wits about you. And then you can see the, the end result after couple of years okay witchcraft burning man i don't know what is even going on with that outfit there uh, you're hanging out with genies love gurus we're going to look at that energy healing okay memoria like it was very light at the beginning Okay, no sugar challenge and stuff like that. Mushrooms. Yoga. And now we see the the full result. She's 30 now. At the beginning, she was 24. You know. And she has a big uh, cope video about how she's hotter now. At this. She's 30. And it's just sad because this is what's happening to millions of Women, they're being initiated, they're being taken by the goddess. Ancestral trauma. The big change with Sky was the urine ritual. If you don't know what the urine ritual was, oh, it's right here. I drank my own pee in front of 200 people, okay? It was a humiliation ritual. And what that does, it's, it destroys your Orlog. If you don't know what Orlog is, it's your family prestige. And you're born into it. It's similar to karma, but it's not the same thing. It's a Nordic law. And your Orlog is basically your prestige that you're born into. Some people have family curses. Some people have family blessings. And when you engage in the urine ritual on stage for the entire internet to see you destroy any of your family's or log in your own line and that actually has a effect through the weird of your own family's or log as well so you're you're not only destroying your own you're destroying everyone that you care about too it's the same thing with the of and the adult industry. These women destroy their family's prestige and Orlog.
That's why you see people with actual high class, their their daughters don't engage in these uh, destructive activities. Okay, so she did the, the urine humiliation ritual. And then after that, it just started to go off the rails. So she's doing ketamine. She's worshiping ice. She's She got really into witchcraft through this one girl. They went kind of viral when they were smashing sticks in the woods doing their rage ritual. It was not a rage ritual. What these are, it's just an outlet of all the entities that are swimming around their vertical field. They need outlets. And you can see, you know, when they get bottled up after so long, they need to have an outlet. And typically the outlets have to do with what we would call borderline personality disorder. Risky sexual behavior, drug abuse, on and off, an inability to hold down any sort of long-term relationship. As we can see with Sky, we're going to see that uh, she's unable to hold on to a long-term relationship. She is lamenting the fact that a three-year um, relationship just ended. And... You're going to see, again, similar to the, the, the same levels of cringe as what was happening with the light worker and the speaking of tongues. This is kind of the same thing. All these bottled up entities are, you know, Inanna's little minions need a outlet. So. Long and it was such an important part of my life. Every breakup I've ever gone through I move on so fast, and I don't know why. I'm like, is there something wrong with me? <laughs> like, I can deeply love somebody, and then all of a sudden, I'm like, okay, that chapter's over, I am moving on, and I don't. You move on because you don't bond. If there's no motherhood involved, if there's no plan, if there's no heart, if there's no home, these relationships are fleeting. They're futile, they don't have any end result, and therefore, without that bond of sharing blood, the lust wears off. And once the lust wears off, either through the male or through the woman, then there's nothing there to bind the relationship together anymore. The only thing that will truly bind a real, loving marriage is a hearth, a home, and children. If you don't share anything, if you're living separately, what is there to keep it together? Nothing. And even now, in our day and age, that's not even enough, unfortunately, because we have people like this, you know, whispering into the ears of women, and we're going to see that in this video, that you don't need a clan or a hearth or a home. Oh, I could get into so much about these folks, right? First of all, just look at um, the coloration here. Purple. We don't need to really dive into that too deep. The physiognomy of the man, right? Uh, just the colorations, the white. We have... The goddess hands, right? She's invoking Inanna with her physical mandalas. Now, I, I will have to do a separate video of these types of guys because it's just such a deep topic, but they know what they're doing. They know that this is a, a sexual hierarchy, that this is, this is an in, this is access. And so what they do is they become extremely skilled in the arts of Inanna and they understand her her ways and they use her spells and her rituals and become very powerful in these arts. And then they, they infiltrate these types of women 
into their own goddess hierarchies and they they do it for sexual access and uh, these these guys are competing within this own uh matriarchy for for access and they compete with uh, not with you know shows of of feats of of valor and honor but um with worm tongues with platitudes and nice sounding words they are the worm tongues they know how to spell craft a man who can spell craft is very dangerous to to women and to himself and to others but that's all this is it's they they want access so new age men are very because they've they've rejected the, the the gods of Hyperborea and the Hyperborean spirit and they they've sworn allegiance to Inanna in order to have the access. Really feel that much around it. <laughs> so what is going on? This is like I why everybody talks about to be like, okay, I'm, now I earned my rest. Who told you that that was life? It's in my lineage. It's a natural primal instinct. <laughs> yeah. Where do you go when you're over there? I don't know, but I just don't feel like sitting up and talking anymore. Because <laughs> you want to run. Come here. Okay. <laughs> right, she's she's casting the, the eye on her. She's locking her in. She's going to break her down here in a second. Can we talk about something? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel this insane drive to be successful because I feel like as a woman, I need to. Every single woman in my lineage has been a housewife. And that's what the Anana cult has implanted in her mind. She has to be this super successful woman living in a castle. Meanwhile, all the other women in her lineage were housewives. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, as she said, it's a primal instinct. I don't think this is a primal instinct for her. I think this is a initiated ideology that she's incurred over her life. Because if this was primal, if this was instinctual, if this was blood memory, she'd follow in the footsteps of her ancestors and want to have a family. But clearly, it's not the case. And I do not want to that I want to make my own money and I want to be successful. I have to. It's like, if I go through my life and I have not created that for myself, I will feel like a failure because I know that I can do it and I have to. I want to be financially successful and provide for my family. As a woman, I do not want to rely on a man for that. Because? Because I just don't, because it's never happened in my family feel that because this is coming up in your relationships sometimes <laughs> the subtext of what you might be putting out there is I don't need you I don't right. need you I don't need you I don't need you and then eventually people are like oh well okay but you know I'll give it to Mr. Man but I think he he was right on that accord but yeah like just that whole kind of episode there was pretty wild I mean this is exactly what's going on right now, you know. Ten years ago, she could have found some, you know, nice middle class guy, you know, upper middle class guy who would have gladly looked after her. But instead, she, for whatever reason, I mean, I know the reason. It's the Anana Ishtar goddess matriarchal revival that, you know, she needs to make her own money and she needs to be super woman. And again, I'm not a, I understand that the whole trad thing is a bit of a psyop. Of course, women always worked a lot. They never just sat around the home. 
before the nuclear family, they had to definitely move their weight. But um, that was in a, a larger clan structure. It wasn't this, I'm a independent unit cell on my own, making my fortune by doing urine rituals online. Maybe you want them. Yeah. Maybe you love them. Mm -hmm. To me, the energy you're wanting is that freedom, that liberation, that being seen, that being yeah. held, and being respected for who you are. And there's so many different parts of you guys. Such a beautiful person. I'm gonna ask you in your body, mm -hmm. where do you feel disrespect? Disrespect. Where is that alive? Where's that been alive in your life? <laughs> I feel disrespect in my womb. Can you put your hands over it? Yeah. Just <laughs> It's okay. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, do I really need to... I don't need to kick someone while they're down. So, I mean, we can all see what's happening here. Just feel it. There. <sighs> can we right. lay down? I... There's Anana. Anana's coming out. She's She's not happy. I don't feel like you can sit up anymore. Before we do that, connect with me for a second. Okay. With me. <laughs> I see you, and that pain is valid. Come back. Come back to me. Come back to me. I want you to just notice the pain and breathe. <laughs> What happens to the actual pain when you look at it? Slowly safe. Mm -hmm. Do you see how much power you have? The pain. In every like every video, she's releasing some sort of pain. I've never seen someone have so much pain release requirements in my entire life. So I don't know what's happened to her, but something, and it's not good. I think it was a urine ritual. Pain lives in the body, and when you pay attention to it, it actually moves. But the suffering lives in the <sighs> mind, and you're letting the mind just run amok. I'm just trying to think of one of my grandmothers found out one of their granddaughters did a urine ritual on stage. They would actually disown them but before they disown them they would probably beat them to a pulp with a spoon or something because maybe it's not the case for you guys but with mine i i see them it's like they're completely different entities from these modern witch cult women like they exemplified the hearth and the home and the reputation and they got married at 21 and had families and that was just it so i don't think the witch cult is innate to female nature but i think the the it's in there the dark feminine and the light feminine are both in inside them it's just which side is nurtured by the clan by society by the kingdom and right now it's uh, the dark sides being nurtured So as the love gurus, you are primarily working with people on love and relationships. What makes you feel like you have the authority to do that? Because I've gone through it. Mm. Because he's held space for me as I went through mm. really, really deep trauma. And this method evolved as we started to teach women how to do the same thing I was doing for myself. This is... We can't even take credit for it. Anana. It just happened on its own control it now this is where we get into the entity part push my hand push my hand push my hand push my hand and then ah, let it go inhale into your belly 
The first thing we start with is breath, because breath will trigger whatever you're holding on to. And the second you introduce breath and you start breathing deeply into your body, and you start um. to get into those <laughs> tight places, especially around the psoas and like anything around the belly. I'm getting, you stretch um, that out. I'm getting some, okay, maybe we can initiate you into our, uh, you know, uh, FFM. Uh, situation vibes going on out you start to feel the stuff you haven't been feeling and then it starts that's another thing too is like the these couples these new age couples a lot of them are into ffm and you have to understand that inanna is the goddess of bdsm and it's have been noted by other people as well Inanna is also an important figure in BDSM culture. The portrayal of Inanna and the Inanna and Iba myth is cited as a precursor example of the dominatrix archetype, characterizing her as a powerful woman who forces gods and men to submit to her. In mythology, Inanna's submissive dance and rituals while being whipped by her to satisfy her. So she's whipping her submissives. When submissives asked for mercy, Inanna ended the flagellation, making such an action the pioneer of BDSM safe word concept. Okay. And also, Inanna is the goddess of sacred prostitution, which is, I think, what's kind of going on here as well, behind the scenes. And that's basically what all the New Age and the inner circles and the Wiccan inner circles is all about. It's all about sex magic and sacred prostitution. You just have to get through the paywall to get there. Or you have the assets that they want for that endeavor. Come up, you start getting images or you start getting feelings or thoughts that you never even thought about before because it's been stored. And as that happens and as you're allowing yourself to hold space for yourself, true healing starts happening. And connect to your womb. Hey, womb. Where have I not been listening to you? What does she say? She feels disrespected. She feels trapped or something. I mean, yeah, yeah, I think you guys know what's going on. From this, uh, not the story, Sky. Bring into the into the sensation. Uh, I feel disrespected by men. I feel like I can't trust. I can't trust them. Do you feel bad about saying that or something? Yeah, because I feel like I can't blame anybody except myself. Well, I mean, she's right. Nobody can actually disrespect me except myself. That's not true. That is not true. You can be disrespected by everybody. Nana, your peers, your partners. Like, if you're just using yourself and giving yourself away for, for nothing, I mean, of course you're going to be disrespected. Like... They're getting it, and they don't have to have any of the responsibilities of getting it. So, that's just how it goes. I don't know if that's true. I think uh-huh. people can disrespect you. Yeah. Women get disrespected all the time. <sighs> so how are you disrespecting yourself? I'm feeling like I'm blaming myself for everything. Everything that happens is my fault. 
I don't know how I find this stuff, guys. I don't know how I find this stuff. I'm guided by... I'm guided, okay? I, I have some help. That's for sure. It's been because I've let it happen. <sighs> Breathe into the belly. And into the chest. Uh, and, and that's the thing is like it's a deeply worn rut it's not going to be light to get out of that mm -hmm. right and your body in so many ways is really fighting to keep you in that because that is survival right mm -hmm. that is what has kept you alive the like i said in my other skylight video when you're regularly hanging out with witches warlocks werewolves vampires demons demon worshipers Isis worshippers, witches, everybody under the sun, you're going to pick up some stuff along the way. It doesn't mean it's comfortable. It doesn't mean it's thriving and flourishing, but it's surviving. If you were a little kid and every wrong thing that you did, somebody blamed you for it and yelled at you for it and punished you for it, how would you feel? Everything. I do is wrong. And ultimately, do you think that little kid is doing wrong things on purpose? No. And what does that little kid mean more than anything in the world? Be accepted. Mm -hmm. And loved. Mm -hmm. I think it's really important that you validate yourself and your emotions. And when these feelings are coming up, you feel them and don't make them wrong. Okay. Don't make yourself wrong. Okay. It's interesting because that's like when... I don't know when she does the stuff. Is she hamming it up for the camera because she thinks it's going to go viral? I don't really know. I tend to think it, this is legit. There's plenty of other of these types of girls who don't go full possession in every video, so know how to be in healthy relationships <laughs> i think there's a little bit of addiction in the beginning of yeah i mean they're playing footsie so i mean obviously there's some uh subtext going on here a relationship where it's like oh i don't know you you don't know me this exists in pure potential <laughs> So everything is possible. I mean, you... like these guys, they know what they're doing. They're sh they're they're in on it. Um, you know, I will probably make a video about my own experiences in this realm because I I was very I was very close to becoming this. Okay, I'm just gonna say I th this was definitely a pathway. That was opened up to me by high level uh, people within the covens. And I, I mean, this was probably going to be my career if I didn't um, have a blood awakening. So, yeah, I'll get into that at a different time, but uh, I mean, I just, I, there's a reason why I know all this stuff in and out, and I'll explore that one day. He really accepted me. <laughs> well, the sad thing is that she probably doesn't want that because of all the stuff. She wants someone who is Dark Triad. She had. Look, she had this guy. I think uh, there's footage of him. I think he was, like, pretty Chad. So, obviously, I mean, you know, there wasn't anything uh, she was missing out on in terms of attraction. But um, he wasn't Dark Triad. He wasn't a Dark Warlock. He wasn't a Sorcerer. That's what she wants. She wants Anton LaVey. And she'll probably be find her Anton LaVey. That's probably who's next on the docket for Sky Life. So, that'll be interesting. To, that'll be the next arc.
a lot of the time she actually ends up scaring these people like they, they're not used to this much you could have you saw it with the light worker girl you see it with them they they kind of they just realize they're starting to lose control and the entities are are taken hold i think as you keep listening to your body i think you'll actually get some words and when you get those words you can speak those words. I mean, and when you I don't know. Words, like, it can't, I can see it. I don't know if you guys can see it. But... Yeah. You cast the spell in life. Mm -hmm. I just want to be celebrated and acknowledged and loved and just held in safety and respect. I want to be worshipped like a queen. <laughs> Because I have the equal capacity to worship that king that I... All right, she's doing energy work on her from the back. Want. Like, I have that capacity and I want to be met. I want to have financial success and independence and to be... Taking. Have you ever seen on any other videos? It's it's all about money. It's all about finances and money. That's everything she's casting for. She's not casting for relationships. She's always casting for for mammon. Care of. Mm -hmm. You've been so beautiful watching you rise into your own power. You're so here. And you're so clear, and you're so sky. Like this is the most sky I've ever seen you. <laughs> There's no fidgeting, there's no, it's just like, boom. If you've been this powerful up until now, I can't imagine what you'll do next. Mm -hmm. I know you can be exactly who you want to be. Mm -hmm. And when a man can meet you in this place, mm -hmm. then you can create that relationship you're talking about. <sighs> I feel ready. I have the capacity. I am expanding. This is wild. I mean, this is peak Inanna Ishtar call. Like, this is what... This is peak Inanna Ishtar call. This is what these people are doing. Okay, these, these women, they're paying money to do sessions like this. Like, it, it's a massive market. This is happening every day in your town and your cities behind closed doors in every corner of North America this is what's going down and it's all pervasive now and it's becoming the new it's becoming such a dominant subculture at this point it will become more of the mainstream culture as time progresses and we can even and I'm going to show you like a like a music video where now, to me, this music video proves that this is now a cultural mainstay phenomenon that's becoming very dominant within the psyches of especially young women. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. We've seen so many women transformed because of this. Not just women, men too. I just saw a side of you I've never seen. In a good way. <laughs> Put your hand on your heart and ask your heart, what does the little me need to hear? Do you amazing? I mean, she's got some extreme Benny Gesserit vibes going on. Your body always has an answer. Mm -hmm. By saying it. Because... You have to realize, like, the Bene Gesserit, they're trained in all the subtleties of movement, of subtextual social cues, of eye contact. They can read everything that you're doing and thinking just by off of your subtle movements. That's what these women excel at. You bring it to you. Yeah. You magnetize it. Mm -hmm. That is the power of a woman.
Yeah, what can I say? Like, this is kind of just, I, I, found, I don't know how I found this, but, you know, it's just, I, I couldn't, I could not talk about it. And this is kind of what's going to be more and more prevalent is that you as a man, if you want to have any type of access, you're going to have to bend the knee and swear allegiance to Anana Ishtar. And maybe you're not doing it consciously, but you're going to start to display the characteristics of a sacred prostitute. Your time is so right. You're going to have to go to yoga with her. You're going to have to understand the, the different crystals. And you're going to have to put up with her um, readings and sh and her activities. And if you're not okay with her, um, you know, plastering herself with tattoos and sigils, then you're 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 out. And there'll be a new initiate to take your place uh, almost immediately. Also, you'll have to do this type of stuff with her too. And I mean, it it it, was, it would just kill, it would kill me inside. I would never be able to live with myself. But um, you know, some men will do anything for it. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, Lemurian, right? It's just a Lemurian with, with Christ consciousness, right? I mean, this is as within, so without. Like, this is the Lemurian consciousness on display for you right now. To elevate clarity, love is the center, killing all illusion, shattering confusion, truth. I'll slap you in the face with the truth. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is like the guy, just, yeah, he's just like an, an avatar at this point. One family, I am you, you are me, holy unbroken, golden era chosen, neck ain't frozen, but I got that golden skin, uh, shining, glistening, can smell all the fruit I've been taking in, alcohol like pussy, got you going crazy. Uh, I don't know if you guys caught that, but is what those women actually believe that they're so high on their own fumes they actually believe that they are somehow like alkaline and you know smelling fruity and whatnot it's just like they they have lost it but this is what they unironically believe about themselves everyone okay this is the obviously she's a bit higher than average within the cult she's like you know a couple degrees up and once you get that high like you start uh, getting real delusional can't get enough it's amazing i'll close it down if you ain't providing i'll close it down if you ain't providing i'll close it down if you ain't christ conscious oh <laughs> see i mean she's using christ conscious but that's not what she means I mean, she's going to close it down She's going. <laughs> She's going to close it down if you do not kneel before an artist. The spirit and dead. She doesn't want a soft boy, she wants dark sorcerer triad, okay? There's dark triad, but you gotta understand, there's another level to the dark triad. There's the dark warlock triad. Okay, black magic, sex magic, and sacrifice. That's the real dark triad. That's what she's actually after. 
Ooh, that's most hype in body class and put my life love me right never stray I'll multiply everything you provide on the tree you open your eyes to the skies and see a night I'm like you're not gonna sacrifice to Moloch she's locking it down your darker side see the magic in your life I'll bring you opportunities keep you close to you did you catch that she had like that oh whoops sorry she had like a little demonic voice. I'll lighten up your darker side. I'll bring you opportunities. Okay, she's gonna cast for you. You're gonna have all the material desires you could ever possibly want. It's true that these women are very, you know, typically materially abundant. Like, very, very wealthy people. Alright, is he going to drop down his bars, or... <laughs> He kind of looks like like a scars guard, like a, <laughs> he looks like a Kalergi scars guard kinda. Like if a scars guard got Kalergied. See, you can you can kind of see it. Like, he's just, like, emptied out. The more emptied out you can be, the easier, you know, the symbolic entities can get in and out. Well, you kind of see these guys really have, like, blank, dead eyes, because, you know. In order to get to that, he had to do some stuff, okay? Probably not, like, high-level stuff, but, like, mid-tier stuff. I mean, she's not high level. Like, she's kind of mid. I mean, I, I, to me, it's not even. I don't really like that uh, hype at all. Like, she's. I don't find her attractive. I would not be doing anything <laughs> for Ball to get access to that. <laughs> oh, but you know, Kalergi. <laughs> Kalergi Skarsgård will be doing whatever it takes. Bear witness to breeze on the palms, squeeze the ink out the pen, and watch the sword bleed. A new breed of MCs, poetry trees, whispers of jewels, a new form of words as the cutlery slicing through the waves. The month of May, tricks for the you get into the root of the seeds, relishing the truth like some chutney, glue to the tube for the gluttony. A box for your mind, fool's gold, travel scrolls, a new home, tropic food in my temple, but a rush in me. I am. It's kind of interesting because her lyrics were actually had a lot more substance to them. And I think that is bleeding through that she actually understands what's going on. I think this guy doesn't really understand and is kind of just along for the ride, so to speak. So I think, yeah, clearly uh, he is her consort. He is like the avatar. He's a golem. So, yeah. And that's kind of what the deal is with this whole, you know, pre-Kurgan cultures that they want men to be the consorts, okay? You're not going to be... What a consort is is a male concubine. You don't have the prestige, you don't have the power, you don't have the authority. You are just a boy toy consort. And um, the Hyperboreans put an end to that entire culture. 
and replace it with what we had, what we come from. But now, I mean, it's it's being completely overthrown. We're going back to the consort culture. So get ready, buckos. You're going to be buck broken by these witches and you're going to have to bend the knee. I put my trust in me. I am that I am. Put my trust in me. I am that I am. Put my trust in me. I am that I am. Put my trust in me. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't think you're putting your trust in yourself. You're putting your trust in that. That, that's not that's not appealing that is not i mean come on it's not guys you know i would rather take a you know germanic uh valkyrie any day over whatever this is going on here okay I mean, with the, these clergy scars guards, that's what they want. And now that there's legions of clergy scar guards all over the place, uh, these the, these women become even more and more empowered. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's yeah, that's that's, that's the world now. Like you're a consort. You are, you're the concubine now. You are the uh, person who gets uh, captured and brought back to the, to the fort. So. Okay, well, I mean, I, honestly, there's still so much more I, I want to talk about, but um, we'll leave it at that today. I mean, this is still just, scratching the very surface of this entire phenomena but um i hope you liked it let me know what you think if you enjoyed it uh please give me a like feel free to subscribe i will continue down the path of exposing the wicca witch cult the triple goddess and nana ishtar revival cult and um let me know if you have any uh, gems of clear-cut examples of this you want me to explore as well. But uh, thanks for sticking around this long. Really appreciate it. And I'll see you next time.